Gorgeous looking shower. Too bad we didn't caulk it. Screws pointing out of the cabinet right here for the range hood. You know, in most cases, I like to see power at the outlets rather than not. They're a little bit more efficient with power. So coming back downstairs, we did wipe up the water that we seen originally, but it looks like the puddle is back and it looks like water is leaking down from behind the cabinet. So we do have something leaking behind the wall. Water is turned on in the house, but nothing comes out here. We have water here though. Glass on a door going from the garage into the house, that compromises the fire rating. You are looking to buy a house in 2024 still, or in 2025, well, pay attention to those new construction scams. I'm not kidding, I was shocked. Like, I'm not a construction professional, but I knew by looking at those videos that things are not right. This is very addicting and entertaining to watch. Like, I can spend a whole hours looking at those videos because I'm just like, oh my God, how would you leave somebody live in there? You are building this house and you're leaving a whole family living in there and safely. I don't know. I, I feel like my conscience will be like, I can't do that. I can't. I don't know. I mean, is that just me? Is that normal in 2024 to just leave houses with like literally hazards? Not even just like the quality is not good, but there is some houses that have hazards in them that are not suitable to leave. Absolutely not. So I got all those videos. I'm going to let them play so you guys can see uh, what I'm talking about. And then I'll catch you at the end so we can have a discussion. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nina Moyo. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And then let's discuss. Look at this house. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think that this building's complete? What if I told you it's not? Are there defects? Yes, there are. But really, that's all I got. Um, I'm going to show you guys a bunch of defects in this brand new house. Custom build. Let's see what we got. All right, there's quite a few, so I'm going to make it quick. And we're going to go outside first so I only die once. Big hole in the front to step in. That's cool. We just said screw finding a way to uh, seal this joint up. Ran this siding all the way down to the soil. That's not going to rot. Yeah, right. Yes, it is. Can't be bothered to... Uh, do these penetrations, flash them right nowhere. There, 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 there. Oh, we did that one. Cool. I know it's petty, but caulk the top of your boxes. Install bricks? Hell no. That entire lintel, there's one little weep hole. That's it. Cracking already? Very cool. Caulk and paint make a carpenter what he ain't. I know you've all seen this bad boy before. Oh, 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 he's got me. My little Pepe the pig guy, he's been pretty cool. He hangs out with me. I have some tiny floors that are off level. I don't feel like busting out a laser. Gorgeous looking shower. Too bad we didn't caulk it. I don't know about you, but all that standing ring right there tells me that water is sitting on this uh, piece of flashing that's sloping back towards the house. And while we're here, we can't disregard the fact that there is a gap in between the window and this sill. Uh, the same sill that's also sloping towards the house. You would think a brand new house would provide us attic access, but uh, we're just going to have to make an assumption on the insulation here. These are too good not to add twice, so watch out for that trip hazard. If you do use it, watch out for the hand rub too. This window here, perfect. Get bent. Can't test this. We didn't even put it in. I lied, I'm gonna die twice, but look at that. What? So if you've hung out that long, I appreciate it. It's just a, you know, example of why coming into it, even a custom home, you need to have a home inspection. It's pretty important. You like that twirl at the end? All right, so half a million dollar flip home. And when you know, you just know. You know when you walk into the kitchen and everything's been updated except the outlets, it's a flip house. Ah, oh, it's mobile. There's no mistake in these new appliances. Or countertops. You know, in most cases, I like to see power at the outlets rather than not. Uh, they're a little bit more efficient with power. Well, what's tightened up around here? And it never fails. I always find one outlet that's got the hot and neutral reversed. That's always good. Looks like Train's first model ever. 
Ooh, prickly. This is a video proving how important it is to have an inspector who goes above the minimum standard. So we fill up all the bathtubs to the overflow. You're really only required to fill up the tub, you know, check for hot or cold water. But beyond that, what you're about to find, the general home inspector is absolutely not required to do. You are not required to move this vacuum cleaner. You are not required to scan this wall with a thermal imaging camera where you can clearly see that there's a temperature difference and then to verify it with a moisture meter to in fact see that, yeah, there's a leak from that tub into this wall. What does everyone think? It's a brand new house. It's not going to have any problems. Well, let me show you all the problems that I find. That's nice. No high loop for the dishwasher drain line. screws pointing out of the cabinet right here for the range hood. Kitchen island, literally not secured to the floor. Glass on a door going from the garage into the house, that compromises the fire rating. Deadbolts upside down, that'll cause premature wear of the cylinder components. Because there's an attached garage, we need to have at least one carbon monoxide detector in here, and all we have are smoke detectors. No COs anywhere. No insulation on the attic access ladder. And open grounds on our master bathroom receptacles. Wow, that's a lot. Another day, another home inspection. Let's get to it. First things first, let's get that hot water going, baby. Now we don't want the water to be over 120 degrees. That's the recommended setting. Uh, usually it's pretty easy to do. If it's an electric water heater, you just turn the elements down. If it's a gas water heater, there's typically just a small little knob that uh, gets turned down as well. Here we can see the infrared camera. We're creeping up. Oh, we're past 120. And we're probably gonna get to 130. Come on, you're so close. There we go. As I said, pretty easy fix. Sure enough, she's turned up just a little bit too much. She should probably be closer to the A as opposed to the B. I'll let the homeowners do that. That's an easy fix, as I said, but uh, I'm never supposed to actually fix anything during the inspection. Now, I can fix small things like there's a loose outlet or a loose door handle, but stuff like this, I've just got to report on it. Look at that, we've got AFCI. It stands for Arc Fault Current Interrupter. It's a special type of breaker. Uh, helps prevent house fires. I always test them on vacant homes like this. Make sure that they're working correctly. When they trip, they go into this middle position. This orange indicator is illuminated and then we turn them off and then back on. But we can see the one for the master bedroom, she is not tripping. So an electrician needs to come out here and replace that breaker. There's our main water shutoff valve. I always got to get my appliances started. I always just do a quick express cycle. Make sure that the bad boy's not leaking. Let's see how the drain line is ran. Did they run it up higher than the bottom of the kitchen sink? They did. That's a high loop. Just what I love to see. Their microwave. Very easy to test. I have this little uh, microwave tester. It should light up whenever it's in operation and working correctly. And that's not happening. Also, who mounted this thing? <laughs> we like to have the microwave flush with the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, I don't know what they were doing here. We got our anti-tip. Oh, we do, we do. That's beautiful, love to see that. I did start the bake uh, right when I got in here. Uh, it's a little dirty, but should be operating correctly. Let's check. Oh yeah, she is cooking. Literally. It's a storm door and it's broken. <laughs> Always gotta test the disposals and, well, nothing's happening. These disposals have many different ways to be reset. Typically there's a little button on the bottom and there it is. It's now reset. It's probably bound up, which is why it stopped working. Yep, that's the bound. Let's see, let's look in the tool belt here. What do we got? There we are. 
disposal allen key. So, you guys are learning stuff today. You can see there's this little opening right there. We're gonna go ahead and put this in there and we are going to crank this bad boy. I gotta be careful, you wanna break it, but let's see if that freed it up. And she's immediately binding again. Sometimes they get really, really rusted and they don't want to come unbound and they just have to be replaced because once those metal parts corrode, good enough. There's nothing you can do, but I think that might have fixed this one. And no, I didn't. <laughs> Time to replace it. All right, I got to wrap this inspection up. I can't keep showing you guys everything. It does take a little bit of my time. So um, if there's anything you want to see on the next inspection, just let me know in the comments and I'll see you on the next one. Million dollars. You know, initially I thought this was a soft close hinge that was messing up. Then I noticed the top corner of the drawer was cut out like it was hitting on something. Well, heck, it was hitting on a gas line and cutting the drawer was the best option. What's this concrete? 60 days old? Now, if you're one of those people that's walking down a sidewalk and you adjust your stride to be able to miss the cracks so you don't step on them, this ain't the patio for you, I'll tell you. you. Might as well pack it up and go home. Now, this ain't something I do very often, but I was walking on this tile and it felt like walking on flagstone. And that's why. It's about seven or eight windows that the builder had already marked with blue tape to be repaired because the counter springs had popped loose. So I started looking a little closer and where that spring had popped loose, it busted a hole in the top of that window. So this needs to be replaced, not repaired. Okay, builder just unlocked the house for me. He said, don't be too hard on us. I said, okay, let's see what we find on this new construction. Um, tile covers not flashed or capped. And another one, nice little hole in the roof. Just can't figure it out, but something doesn't look right here. And like everyone, low nails everywhere. Like every other fence, this one's got some damage in it too. A little crack in the foundation, comes out to about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Water is turned on in the house, but nothing comes out here. We have water here though. This entire section of flooring all squeaks when you walk on it. General rule of thumb, if the drywall is in the garage, it does not matter. Garage man door. Missing the outlet trim. Threshold trim not installed. And what would a bathroom be without a scratch towel bar? Some schluter right here that's sharp enough to cut you. Some dents and dings all around your tub. Some caulking missing. Little tiny cracks in the window frame. When clients ask if they should get their new build inspected, send them this video. Final walkthrough inspection. House is selling for about 900,000. It's around 4,200 square feet. Let's check it out. Always like to pop open some of the floor registers, make sure they got the ductwork nice and tight. This one is partially disconnected and we're losing some of the air below the floor. We're in one of the guest bathrooms and we're missing a little piece of trim next to the bathtub. Have some damage at one of the interior doors. Once we walked into the house, we noticed there was some water sitting on the kitchen counter, which is right below this area. So we're running some water and we'll see if anything leaks. So coming back downstairs, we did wipe up the water that we seen originally, but it looks like the puddle is back and it looks like water is leaking down from behind the cabinet. So we do have something leaking behind the wall. Pulling out the infrared camera, we can see that the main drain stack is coming down behind this wall. So something's damaged and leaking behind there, possibly even one of the screws for the cabinets that penetrated that pipe. Looks like somebody spilled some paint on the front porch and never cleaned it up. Also left some nails here, which gave us some nice little rusty stains. Have a broken window in the dining room. This is gonna have to get replaced. Missing a cover at one of the bathroom exhaust fans coming out the side of the house. House has a little stone veneer going around the, the bottom 
and we do have a damaged stone and then also some mortar that needs to be touched up kind of hard to see but it looks like they did not paint the trim behind the downspouts have another damaged stone at the veneer this is below the basement exterior door have some cracked concrete Kind of hard to tell, but we do have a large gap below the threshold. And then they left a ton of construction debris down in this stairwell that needs to get cleared out. Oh my god, it's so bad. It's way worse than I thought, honestly. I feel like those people should charge. Like, I've, Okay, the inspector is there to point out those issues. But I wonder, like... Can you can you sue those companies to build house this way? Cause I mean, I understand that the inspector role is not there to actually make sure that you can buy this house or not. It's just pointing at stuff to show you that hey, there's a bunch of things going on in this house. Are you sure you want to purchase it? Also, I know that some banks will not lend you money if the inspector the inspection don't go through. So, it, I mean, if you insert in programs, not all of them. It's interesting to see that overall, all of these inspectors that are from anywhere in the United States are pointing at something that is a general problem. New builds are really, 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 really bad quality. Unfortunately, to, for you to have a quality house, you will need to go with a very high quality builder. And I feel that's kind of sad because not everybody has the money to afford those type of builders. And... In the same time, I don't think that you should be able to have afford a high quality builder to have a decent house to live in. The work should be done. The thing that I was the most surprised with, with all the leaks, there are so many leaks. I don't know. I thought that when you had a leak is because like something has been there for so long. Uh, it's not tight enough anymore. Blah, 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 blah. So then you have a leak. You just have to come and like be strong and... You know tight way needs to tight or like you repair the holes or whatever those leaks are happening in the house nobody have been living in there yet so it's really just showing like a lack of quality and control management it's just that somebody did the thing didn't screw or didn't put the thing together like, i'm not a professional so i'm trying to find my words <laughs> didn't put things together like in the most tight way or didn't put the right material or something for that leak to happen and the sad part is a leak can damage a significant part of the house in america a lot of parts of the house are made in materials that are like not resistant to water so like wood uh, you're gonna have wood infiltrated with water and that video where it literally goes on the counter in your kitchen imagine finding out that like, the first week you're over there cooking woo, 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 i'm in my new house right and then your partner is taking a shower or your partner is like taking a bath or washing the kids and then all of the sudden like bath water is on your counter how would you how would you feel in your one million plus dollar house I will be so furious. I will be so mad because you know a leak like that means high repairs, expensive money, and you already spent all your coins in closing on the house, and you over there like, oh my god, I have a leak. First day I'm living in the house. I think that's terrible, and and I think that that's why inspectors, house inspectors, are so valuable. Some people are, they don't care. They're just like, hey, I'm just gonna close on the house. I don't care the state it's in. It's fine. I'm gonna buy it as it is. Da, da da da. I'll just deal with the thing, thinking that they can do it all by themselves. Hey, if your background is being like a house builder, or you have a family member, somebody that you know that can do everything in the house for you and check all of these things, so you don't want to pay for it from a third party and just go over that step cool but don't think about doing it if you don't have no knowledge and you just go in the house and look at the paints look at the floors oh it's nice in there and think that you're gonna be okay you're not like honestly i'm just a girl in the world i'm just a girl i would not trust myself to look at something even if i looked at all those videos and they're like super addicted i would not trust myself like going in the house and be like oh yeah yeah, yeah this house is fine no these people are super 
super valuable and you need them to make sure that you're going to be in a place that is safe and you're going to be in a place that is okay that you're going to be like you know even like something so small at the was it like um uh a alarm or something that was missing in one of the places like you just have the smoke one but not the uh, gas one or whatever those are things i'm not gonna i'm just oh they have they have those alarm zones so it's enough i had no idea you needed multiple ones next to a garage door i mean that's things that only a person with skills person with knowledge and experience can know don't get you on spending the extra 600 thousand dollar on house suspension because for me it's not extra it's like a need especially if you're sure 100 percent that you want the house like even go with a couple ones if you need to because you will have to make sure 100 percent that that house is livable and you're not gonna have like no surprises coming up one day like you're sleeping and then you start feeling drops of water on your forehead like no no Anywho, I feel like the market right now, like for housing anyways, is crazy. So if you can afford a new house, good for you. Oh my God, that's amazing. Um, just make sure that you, you know, have your house inspector checking everything. And I would love to know in the comment section, did you guys went through crazy issues like in the new house you've been in, especially the one that I have been built the last three to four years, I would say, like the newer ones, because we seeing all those videos all over social media it's not like isolated issue it's literally like nationwide so i would love to know if you guys are going through the same thing and if you have like little like stories and stuff please put in the comment section don't forget to subscribe to like this video if you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one bye bye